It's good. It's good? Yeah. Okay. okay. Hello, friends. Welcome to the episode of Words with Father from Catholic Human Center, Arkansas State University campus. I'm Father Alphonse. Today I'm going to talk to you about the fourth chapter, the first part of the fourth, 14th chapter of uh, Book of Revelation. I would like to read the passage for you. If you have Bibles in your hands, please open to the chapter 14 in the book of Revelation. The Companions of the Lamb. Then the Lamb appeared in my vision. He was standing on Mount Zion, and with him were the 144,000 who had his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven which resembled the roaring of the, sh of the deep or loud peals of thunder. The sound I heard was like the melody of harpists playing on their harps. They were singing a new hymn before the throne in the presence of the four living creatures and the elders. This hymn no one could learn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the world. These are men who have never been defiled by immorality with women. They are pure and follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of uh, mankind for God and the Lamb. On their lips no deceit had been found. They are indeed without flaw. In the Mass, we pray, especially before the, ho the consecrated host and wine became, that have become the body and blood of Jesus Christ were shown to the people, this saying, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to His Supper. The whole congregation in the Mass pray, saying, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. What a fervent prayer. Uh, sometimes we may take that prayer for granted and you know, say without meaning, but when we say those prayers, we have to look at the Lamb that is on the altar at that time to be elevated and shown to us. Um, so the Lamb of God is what we are going to talk today. In the passage that we have just read, there are three elements. One is the Lamb of God, two, Mount Zion, and three, the companions of the Lamb of God singing a new song. I will try to deal with the Lamb of God in depth today. And perhaps at another time, I will talk to you about the Mount Zion and the singing a new song. If you remember from the episodes in the beginning of our discussion, in the chapters like chapter 4 and so on, I have uh, explained to you what it looks like, what it feels like, what it is in heaven, that the throne of God in the center and surrounding him are the four elders, um, the, the images of ox, lion, and man, and eagle are surrounding this, uh, this throne of God. And the 24 elders and their thrones are surrounded. And to the right hand of God the Father is also seated. Uh, there's a throne on which the Lamb uh, of God, who is the Son of God, Jesus himself, is seated. 
And in the hand of God, there is a scroll nobody is worthy to open. And the Lamb of God goes and takes the scroll and opens and break opens the seals, the seven seals with which the scroll had been sealed so securely. And so we are talking about that Lamb of God, okay? The Lamb appeared in the vision of St. John, the author of the book of Revelation. And he was standing on Mount Zion, and with him were the 144,000 who had the name of the Lamb of God and the name of the Father of God or marked on their foreheads. There is a lot of uh, scripture that we can quote about the Lamb of God, both from Old Testament and New Testament. But I'm going to be um, restricting myself with only a couple. The first is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29. This is uh, when the John the Baptist was baptizing people in the River Jordan, and he was preaching to people, and Jesus happens to pass, and he points out to Jesus and says, Look, there is the, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And you see, Jesus is the Lamb of God, even according to St. John the Baptist. And St. John the Baptist came not for his own uh, purpose, but to point out to the one who will save the world. He will take away the sins of the world, and that's how he will save not like any other king or emperor in this world that the world had known, but by dying, but by his blood upon the cross. It is of whom I said, after me is to come a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. John did not know him. It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. He said, I confess I did not recognize him, though the very reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. And John gave his testimony also. I saw the spirit descend like the dove from the sky, and it came to rest on him. So this is the Lamb of God. John the Baptist should have understood the concept of the Lamb of God very easily because he was from priestly family, Le Le Levitical family, because you remember his father, uh, Zechariah, was the priest at the time he had uh, the vision from angel promising the birth of J John the Baptist. He was serving in the sanctuary and, of course, you know the whole story. Uh, Zechariah doesn't be believe. Uh, how could? How is it possible in the old age, he and his wife become parents, and so as a sign, he gets to be deaf and dumb, and until the day of the circumcision of John the Baptist. So, John the Baptist, according to the natural order, should have been the priest in the temple, but he saw some things that are not right in the eye of, eyes of God uh, that have been happening in the temple. Uh, and so he withdrew himself from the temple. He, he, goes, he went into uh, uh, River Jordan area and brought people, attracted people away from the temple. Temple anymore is not 
the center of worship. John the Baptist is attracting people so that he could show someone else greater than the temple. This someone else is the lamb who will be the priest and the victim, uh, not in that temple, but the temple that is the cross, the altar which is on the temple of Calvary, okay? And so let us talk a little more about the lamb. What is this lamb? Where is this coming from? In the Old Testament, in uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 12, uh, if you can open it, I'm going to just cite few verses for your benefit so you can learn what this lamb is all about. People of Israel were in slavery under Egypt, in, under Pharaoh, for 400 years and more. And God, through the intervention of Moses, has planned to deliver the people because they were calling out for help uh, from God, from Yahweh, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. So God chooses Moses to send to them uh, so that he can deliver them from the clutches and of the slavery of the Egyptians. And uh, after several attempts, after several uh, plagues and so on, Moses finally has approval from God and from uh, Pharaoh that the people are liberated and they can go. But there is one more thing that God has planned to cause to the people of Egypt. That is the death of their firstborn male uh, children. Uh, so the night, God in his uh, message to Moses says, tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. The lamb must be one year old, male, and without blemish. Remember? Without blemish. It, it, so when you offer yourself, when you offer some offering to God, it should be pure. It should be holy. It should be complete. You cannot simply offer um, rotten vegetables, for example, or uh, you cannot offer animals with blemish, with um, some kind of deformity uh, to God. God is holy. He should get the first and foremost, the most, uh, the highest uh, regard and respect. Uh, so give to him the best. That's what I mean. Give to God that is, that is best. What is best? You, yourself. When you offer Mass, what are you giving? You are giving yourself, putting yourself into the uh, host and wine and offer yourself, your family, your community to the God the Father. And God the Father, through the Holy Spirit, turns that host and wine that you were you, but now it becomes Jesus Christ himself. Okay, so uh, talking about without blemish, you know, we have a, a couple of uh, quotations from First Peter 1, 22, 23. If you have Bibles, please open 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 and 20, 22 and 23. Okay. By obedience, all right, it is by obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves for a genuine love of your brothers.
I think I have it wrong. Well, let us see another one. Second Corinthians 5.21. For our sake, God made him who did not know sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the very holiness of God. Jesus didn't have any sins in himself, but he had become sin because of our, he took our, our sinfulness to himself. So going back to chapter 12 from Exodus, the lamb that was offered that night should be without blemish. The whole assembly of Israel should be present. It shall be slaughtered during that evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb that that same night they shall eat its roasted flesh and unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. Here, you have to pay attention. The lamb is slaughtered and the blood is taken. So there is the first element, the blood is taken and apply to the doorposts and the lintels of your house and so that the angel of death will see that blood and pass away. It will not do any harm to the household uh, wherever the blood is applied, so the blood. Two, also we have the lamb that was slaughtered, the flesh. It should be roasted and in no other way it should be cooked. It should be roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. See, there's the blood, there is the flesh roasted, and there is the unleavened bread, okay? All these three elements, where do we find? In the mass, right? Jesus is slaughtered. Of course, we talk about unbloody sacrifice in the mass, and, and so, but the wine becomes the blood of Christ, and when the blood of Christ is given to us, the door posts, the lintels of our body. What is this? Our mouth, our lips are stained with the blood of Christ. Then the, anything that is troubling us, tempting us, evil that is looking to kill us, even spiritual death or physical death will pass away from us and we will be saved because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then the, the flesh of Jesus Christ. We, we have that flesh of Jesus Christ in the unleavened bread, right? The unleavened bread that we use in the mass. Some people call it wafers, some people call it hosts, whatever it is, but that bread is when consecrated, the transubstantiation takes place and then it becomes the flesh of Christ, flesh of Christ, and that we eat, that we, that we are given to eat, so saying the body of Christ, right? And so all these three elements are present in our Holy Communion. So let us go back to our chapter 14 in the book of Revelation See, where is this lamb located? It is located standing on Mount Zion. Where does, where, what is this Mount Zion? Mount Zion is where the mount where, on which the temple of God, the temple of Israel was built by Solomon. Uh, David had, Jerusalem is David's city and the, the place where the temple was built is called Mount Zion. And Mount Z whenever you say Mount Zion, people go to Jerusalem uh, climbing up the mount. And on the mountain is the temple, and in the temple are the sacrifices done. The lambs are slaughtered. But Jesus here stands on a Mount Zion 
the lamb is standing on Mount Zion. Symbolically, whatever mountain, mountain is this, maybe heaven itself. And with him are 144,000 people. And all these people have Jesus' name, the Lamb's name, and the, and the name of God the Father imprinted on their foreheads. And the, the very interesting thing is that these hundred, and, where do they? 144,000 come from. This is coming from 12 apostles or 12 um, patriarchs of uh, Israel, 12 tribes. They are multiplied, 12 in, by, uh, uh, multiplied by 12, 144,000 times, which is numberless, okay? All people marked with the sign of cross, was marked with the name of the Lamb of God, marked with the, the name of God the Father. Everyone, what do they do? They know a song. They are singing. It's a new song. It's not the 151 uh, Psalms that we have known prior to this. These people are singing a new song, praising God, glory to God, hallelujah to God and Hosanna, and so on. So nobody else know except those people who have been signed with, marked with this, this name of God the Father and God the Son. So this, this is uh, entirely and without doubt is truly what's happening in the Mass. We are all gathered there. When we sing Hosanna, we join this 144,000 who have been slaughtered, who have been martyred, whose blood has been shed for the name of Jesus Christ and are in heaven. And we join them. The angels are singing and we join the angels. That is why in Masses I always uh, encourage everyone to sing uh, the Mass songs. Uh, say the mass prayers, say, sing Amen, sing Alleluia, sing Gloria, because if you do not know them, if you do not sing now, you will not learn. If you do not know, you, you, know, you will not be part of uh, those 144,000 people, the multitudes of people who are singing the song, because remember the word of God said, only they know and nobody else know. I'll read that for you again. See, um, these are men who have never been defiled by immorality with women. They are pure and follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They have been ransomed at the, as the first fruit of mankind for God and the Lamb. On their lips no deceit has been found. They are indeed without flaw. Um, I heard a sound from heaven which uh, resembled a roaring of the deep or loud peals of thunder. The sound I heard was uh, like a melody of harpies playing on their harps. They were singing a new hymn before the throne in the presence of the living, uh, four living creatures and the elders. This hymn no one could learn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the world. Okay, so let us uh, end this. By praying the Lamb of God, okay, all together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us meet with another episode. Uh, for now, uh, goodbye and God bless you.